Hello, I am Matthew Buffenkamp, and this is my 15112 term project. Um, I made a game entitled 112 The Saga, which is based on the class 112 over the semester. So there are 10 different levels, each one represents um, one week of homework, and it has a mechanic that represents that uh, assignment. So, let's begin. Let's try to get through this quickly. Basically, I can move myself around, and I have this sword mechanic, so I can press the spacebar to activate the sword. It takes time to recharge, and that recharge is shown by this recharge bar. My grade is at the lower left-hand corner. Making mistakes will make that go down, just like in real life. So, let's begin. Uh, I'm going to skip through these directions because they take too long. Basically, in this room, I want to slash all the truthy values and leave the falsy ones alone. Also, I don't want anything to, um, to touch me because that would cause my grade to go down. So I have to avoid all these values. So, and if anything were to touch me, then my grade goes down by 5%, as you can see right there. So, next room. Um, kind of same mechanic as before, but there's this if statement at the upper left-hand corner, and it says right now, if objects does not equal 10, then objects will equal 10, which is kind of an oxymoron at this point, but, um, so I want to make sure that I pay attention to this if statement, and if it is, um, so if I were to make objects not equal 10, then like, see, another one just comes back. And I don't want the number to reset because I want to get rid of all of them. So I need to actually get rid of them when the if statement is different. And it changes every few seconds, but for some reason, due to randomness, it's just not changing. Okay, there we go. So if I were to slash one of these, the quantity would change. The number represents the number that are currently on the board so that you don't have to like count them every time. All right, so there's that, next level. Um, so this one, the wheels from week three attack me. Um, they change depending on my position. I just wanna slash through all of them. There's 25 here. They don't all appear on the screen at once because that would just be too much and we would all have panic attacks. So yeah, this is our nightmares that have been relived in the form of my game. So, all right, next level. Um, so this is from week four. We have the letters in the word amazing here that are moving onto the screen. I want to get rid of them. And again, I don't want them to collide with me. It's basically just a general rule in this game. You don't want things to collide with you, whether they're good or bad. Um, so then they start moving into a circle once they're all on the board and they start growing indefinitely. Um, they'll keep growing forever until basically they like shove you off the board. Again, you don't want to collide with them because then your score goes down. Oh no. You can see that right there, my score went down. All right, so week five, um, we have the histogram here. We had to make a week five. Um, that is going to update itself every so often, making a new square. Again, we don't want to collide with anything, and we want to get rid of the entire histogram in order to move on, and colliding with it will cause grades to drop. So, next level, Tetris! Holy freaky Jesus, there's Tetris! Tetris pieces falling from the sky, and we want to just get to the exit before they crush us. And for some reason, they're not spawning in front of the exit. That's just due to randomness, not really, like, a problem or anything. Okay, so, <coughs> week seven, we want to um, bubble sort this list that um, we do that by swiping this swap thing. If I were to swap something in the wrong order, then my grade would go down like that. Oh, no. So... That's that. Um, once the numbers are all swapped in the correct order, then I can move on. Um, also, in this level, is probably the only one where I don't have to worry about not colliding with anything. I can collide with whatever I want. So, there's that. Week 8 um, is Frogger, but you get to kill things. That's cool. Um, so, again, same mechanics as a normal Frogger. You want to make it to the end. Can't go in the water. Um, you can also like slash the turtles and logs and stuff, but again, that's not really useful since they're helpful. And of course you can collide with them. You can't not collide with them and get past because they're your safe way to get across the water, obviously. So next one, um, number nine is flood fill. Um, you can see that the flood fill is forming. Um, it goes up, left, right, down. So I want to get rid of the, all the flood fill. It starts out increasing quickly, but then it slows down. The blue square squares are like uh, safe zones, so the flood pill can't pass through them, but I can. So there's that. We move on to the next level, which is Monte Carlo. I want to get 
rid of as many trials as I can in 30 seconds, and um, at the end, then random numbers will be generated between 0 and 5, and or 0 and 10, and the closer the average is to 5, then the better off I am. So, I just want to get to destroy as many trials as possible. Um, so, I'll just let the last few seconds trickle in so you can see what happens then. And, yeah, all the trials go away. I collected 41. Want to get 5. Monte Carlo gives us 5.17. So, that's 0 0.1 off. So, I decrease by 1%. And then I finish. And then there's a waiting screen. It has a customized message depending on what your grade was. So hopefully I don't plan taking higher CS courses, but unfortunately I do because I'm computational biology and that implies computing. So yeah, that's my game. Hope you liked it. Good luck on all your future projects and ventures, I guess. See you sometime in the future, possibly. Maybe. We'll see. Hope you enjoyed. Mm.